everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching the vlog. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, the guy. I am the guy. I want to talk about uh, the devil. Yeah, you won't see too many uh, blogs about the devil. Uh, I wanted to offer you sort of all the information from different religions that I've studied about the devil and uh, we'll sort of talk it out and maybe come to some new conclusions about the devil. Uh, where to start? We're listening to <laughs> a cover actually. This is a cover of a song that I wrote in 2006 called Everclear. It's a song about drinking and partying with your girlfriend. And I'm listening to a gentleman by the name of Mike Lynch. He made a like a full band cover it of her of her cover of it. <laughs> cover of it. <laughs> but he does a really good job. And he does like a bridge and a solo in the middle. I'll put the link to this in the description down there. And uh, I'm not uh, I'm not like a lot of musicians. I am um, I don't it's weird because I don't feel like possessive with my own music. I know that it's my music, but um, when I see other people covering my music because I guess maybe because there's no uh, there's minimal legal stuff involved, like I've copywritten my music, right? But I also, at the same time, if somebody else covers my music, what do I care? I mean, I know that it's my song. He knows that it's my song. And he's not telling anybody that he wrote it, so. This is the cool bridge part. She makes me crazy, crazy. A little solo. And he's also a better guitarist than I am. Anyway, you can check that out for yourself. I'll put the link in the description. Everclear, covered by uh, my Lynch. Full band. And because, you know, I can play drums and bass, and I, I'm not going to say that I'm a great singer, but I try. And uh, play guitar. Most of the songs that I write, in my head, I envision them full band songs and then play them on acoustic because it's easier to play a song on an acoustic guitar than it is to play drums, bass, guitar all at the same time. When you go into studio, it's a bit different. So I've recorded a few full band songs. And for all this uh, stuff about my music, you can go to uh, adamjosh.com and check out the music section and you'll see the bands I've been in, the stuff, the four track stuff that I've done, etc, etc. Sorry to sidetrack off there, but listening to uh, this guy got me thinking about music. We're talking about the devil. Maybe something to do with the devil and music will tie in together somewhere. So. Whether you believe in the devil or not, there's a lot of people on the same earth that you're on that do. Um, Judaism has their the adversary, Hashaytan. Islam has Iblis, uh, the devil, translated, I suppose. And uh, Christianity has its uh, Satan, devil, Satan, Hashitan, the adversary, a variation of it. So you say, average people watching this might say, you know, I don't believe in the devil Adam. Well, even if you don't, the population of Islam alone is like 1.5 billion. So there's lots of people on this same planet that believe in 
the devil. Now, the question is that you have to ask yourself is the truth. The truth is the truth. So whether or not you believe in something or not doesn't really affect uh, its existence if it's the truth. I don't believe in this cup. You know, I don't believe. I believe it's all made of. I believe it's all made of atoms and energy, and, and it's not really there. This is all in my mind, right? Doesn't change the fact that I just took a sip of it, <clears throat> and it's still there. Sorry, somebody's texting me. I'm gonna turn my phone off. <laughs> Who texts people at 8.30 in the morning? <clears throat> so, the devil. First of all, I want to say, and this is important, I think, that any definition of the devil would say that the devil, this character, has existed longer than you and me, all right? Like, we, de depending on whether or not you want to get into reincarnation, you I mean, most people aren't fully aware all the time of their previous lives, etc., etc. So, even if reincarnation uh, happens, I mean, and it does, I mean, <sighs> see, when we talk in words, talk in, in like slogan type words, it's confusing because what you might be hearing something different than I'm trying to say. When you plant a seed in the ground and it grows, that's reincarnation, you know? Um, when, when a parent gives birth to a child, their DNA is carried on. In a sense, that's re reincarnation. As far as you know, individual souls being rebirthed through um, different bodies, but the same sort of entity that's controlling the body. If you believe in Christianity or Judaism, they say, you know, the prophets come back, uh, they appear in different in different uh, times, in different histories, the same prophet, so that's in a sense reincarnation. So we're, you know, taking that word reincarnation and demystifying it and saying it's sort of practical and you can see its aspects. So that's another issue, but if you want to talk about the character of this devil character, if you want to talk about him because he has existed longer than you have and that gives him sort of an advantage so an entity who has existed longer than you have millennia or whatever lots and lots of time longer and is not um, limited like you are in the human body, I said, in that sense. An entity that's limited like that and then goes out of its way to pick on you, that's sort of unfair, right? It's sort of cowardice. So, in that context, it would be pretty safe to say that the devil is a coward. And from studying three major world religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, they, the devil character that they have in all three could loosely be defined as a coward. And the power that we give him, or the power that people have given him through their fear of death and fear of the dark, fear of dark energy, fear of the boogeyman, that power uh, can manifest real things in life and uh, we in that sense humanity whatever we direct our attention to collectively we manifest in some various form through the power of the human mind and through the power of shared consciousness so 
there's a problem. This cup doesn't exist, but you get a hundred people in a room that says, yeah, it does, and it's poison. Uh, there's a very good chance that either subconsciously or not, either through mass hallucination or whatever, that uh, this cup will become poison to at least the people in the room. <clears throat> Side tracking completely. The story in Islam is that uh, you read this in the uh, Quran that at uh, the dawn of creation, uh, Allah said to Iblis, uh, you know, prostrate before the first man. High five, Adam. And uh, Iblis refused. So Allah turned him into or cast him out of the heavens and now he's Iblis has been forever set against humanity and so this, there's this like epic you know uh, struggle between um, Allah's creation and Iblis trying to mess them up and prevent them from worshipping, prevent them from praying. This is Islam goes so far as to say that Iblis is concerned with preventing Muslims to pray and keeping them off got their focus off of Allah and praying five times a day and so then psychologically that makes them feel like well Allah told Iblis to bow before me that makes them feel like all right you know proud and like mighty right and then He's trying to stop me from praying. Oh, I'll show him. I'm going to pray six times a day, you know? So, whether or not uh, that is the complete 100% unadulterated truth or not is up for debate. I'm not a Muslim, and I've studied Islam for a long time, so that's sort of my personal opinion, you can tell. Another thing to consider, that's Islam, sort of. Uh, in Judaism, in, in uh, you know, the religion or the spirituality faith of Israel, there's actually, in the book of Daniel, it talks, uh, talks about how the uh, adversaries stood up against Israel. They, they speak about a sort of, there's not much direct reference to the devil or the adversary. There's Genesis chapter 3, you have the serpent, uh, which, uh, the, you know, evil personified as a serpent trying to trick the first uh, couple created by this extremely powerful entity. Uh, trying to trick them into not obeying him, into going against his word, and to basically piss him off. So, in this sense, you see in the Torah this character, the devil, trying to trick people into not obeying the word of the, their uh, creator. Now, there's some people who would think, say that uh, the devil and demons are fallen angels. Angels being uh, creations of the powerful entity that people call different things that is responsible for the creation of uh, everything. Uh, where these angels exist is another another uh, topic. Um, nowadays, it seems that uh, we're getting a little bit more terrestrial or extraterrestrial in our, under in our understanding and saying that. Uh, it's likely that the creator is uh, uh, of humanity 
uh, may very well have been an alien race or alien species or extraterrestrials that may look exactly like us, thus being created in their image. It's not that uh, they look like us when they when they people see them. It's that we look like them because we were created by genetic manipulation or genetic modification or pure extraterrestrial wizardry that I don't understand. And in that sense, it might be a little easier for your mind to understand that if we were created by extraterrestrial human-looking ETs that look like us but are way advanced, then the devil, in that sense, would be another race of alien extraterrestrials, uh, like David Icke calls the reptilians, who, and, you know, his followers, a th uh, what is it, a, th a third, a third of the uh, angels, uh, or is it a quarter, a third? I can't remember the exact, a whole bunch of angels sort of fell to the earth with him, but that's what the, I'm quoting Revelation now loosely. So, nowadays, like I said, people are sort of making it a little bit more extraterrestrial involved, so the devil and his uh, minions would be the extraterrestrials who are at war uh, with this other race of extraterrestrials that are protecting our planet, uh, and the reptilian reptilians are the uh, race that are sort of guiding all our politics at the most corrupt levels, and the good ETs are the ones that are making sure that we don't uh, self-implode as a planet, as a species, the ones that are reported to be powering down nuclear missile silos and uh, preventing global catastrophes and destroying underground bases. Now these reptilian people, extraterrestrials, sort of show up in our, all of our ancient history. There's ancient astronaut theories. Uh, another thing to consider is this, um, these giant, you know, the giants, the Nephilim. Genesis chapter 6 talks about the sons of God mingling with the daughters of men. Now, that very well could have been extraterrestrials mating with women, human women. It very well could have been uh, these same reptilian fallen uh, extraterrestrials mating with women. You know, as I say it right now, you know, maybe the Maybe the Van, Al Van Allen belts are what hold the reptilian race here, whereas the good ETs who created it, if they created it, are free to come and go around the Van Allen belts. So maybe that's the, the prison that they're stuck in here. So they can go off-world, but only in the outer atmosphere until they reach the Van Allen belts. <clears throat> maybe this extraterrestrial race led it. Led it headed up by this entity known as Lucifer. So, in short, about Lucifer, the devil, if you want to talk about him personified, for him to have anything to do with humanity, like if you think he's picking on you, or people say the devil's after me, you know, to me that's cowardice extremely cowardice and doesn't stop it from happening maybe but maybe this can help you stop it from happening or stop it in your mind at least that if there's an entity that's vastly superior and vastly older than you picking on you that's like a 50 year old man uh, irritating a two year old or you know pecking at a two year old or poking at a two year old like this it's nonsense the, the scales are so tipped that only an extreme coward would would be uh, doing anything like that to a human. 
So if it's out of spite for being trapped here on earth and ultimately, as the book of Revelation talks about, being cast into the lake of fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels, I could see why this entity is upset. It doesn't stop him from being a coward. And people, another thing that I wanted to talk about is the people that are who are obsessed with the devil. There's this one character on YouTube that I'm thinking about specifically, but it's like he's channeling Marilyn Manson, trying to tell, trying to tell everybody how scary he is, or convince you that he's really into like the devil and dark and scary things, and. Uh, Somebody who's like completely sold out to the devil uh, is sort of pathetic, I think, even to the devil. Hey boss. Hello. You got a drum? Yeah. Under coffee. Yeah. Oh. Uh, hmm. We can just put it right in here. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll open the door and we'll put it right in here. Hold that thought, everybody. You know, we do undercoating and there's a drum of undercoating here. If I was a super spiritual Christian, I would say, oh, the devil is interrupting me. <laughs> no, I ordered a drum of product for undercoating a few days ago, and they arrived with it. That's not the devil interrupting me. I, you know, I went to, I studied uh, sort of mainline, mainstream evangelical Christianity and went to like a Bible college for two years, which is a completely other subject. If you want to go to the archive section, go to 2009 and check out the uh, of adamjosh.com and check out a blog that I wrote called On Peter Younger, and, and that will give you a sort of a brief rundown of uh, how that experience went. But while I was there, we had, uh, you know, preachers come all the time, and there's one, you know, He's got the microphone in his hand and the battery's died. He's like, Take down! Get out of the microphone! Devil! Get out of the microphone! And, uh, you know, the tech guy comes up to him with batteries in his hand. He's like, It's just, the batteries are dead. It's like, Oh! Put the batteries in. Is this on? Alright! Not show that devil! <laughs> so this is, this is what I'm saying, is that people who have made uh, this devil character big in their mind, for them, yes, the, this devil character is big in their mind. I mean, you can't stop that. All you can do is sort of educate people. Um, and, um, and hope for the best. Devil! Get out of my microphone! Devil! <laughs> At the same time, it's, uh, there's some pretty strong warnings throughout the throughout the gospel, not the gospels, but the, the writings of Paul, you know, to not be so ignorant about uh, 
higher forces or higher authority chain of command entities, don't be ignorant about them and revile them when you don't know anything about them. And uh, so, you know, I don't usually talk about this type of stuff, but uh, so these Marilyn Manson type people, not maybe him himself, but like are channeling this darkness and you see like Los Zetas, they're, you know, they all, well not all of them, but there's, they channel and they focus on this Grim Reaper with a gold crown and the Illuminati, you know, offers sacrifices and drinks human blood and does it all in the name of Lucifer. They want that pure Luciferian light and they're all channeling this entity um, to me that is a created entity and anything that's created to me uh, isn't as powerful as the creator so I wouldn't be bothered with it you know sometimes I think he's a created being I'm a created being he's lived a lot longer than I have and the scales are tipped but it's also the scales are tipped uh, in the scope of it's not really good versus evil there's that illusion I'm sure that that our reality is based on good versus evil and it's sort of like these opposite ends of the, of the spectrum and it's perfectly balanced like that good versus evil but when the creator entity who's responsible or whatever is responsible for all this creation for lions and zebras and trees and seeds and holographic infinites and atoms and atoms that creator to me is a lot more powerful than a fallen angel so the scales aren't really even it's sort of tipped and if the reptilian race who shows up throughout uh, you know ancient uh, scribblings and uh, warnings and prophecies and these reptilian off-world people entities are stuck here then uh, you know they'll do the best they can I suppose you know what carry on the species so all that said um, another thing about the devil is this energy this negative energy if you have if you have like 20 people in a room and they're all thinking about one specific person good or bad I mean that person will feel it they may not even be physically or mentally aware but their fit their physical body will will register real changes uh, as documented by uh, I think it's dr. Cleve Baxter is one of them and there's other people, I can't remember off the top of my head, if you read David Wilcox's book, The Source Field Investigations, you'll see lots of proof and documented proof for this phenomenon that when you, when enough people or even stronger individuals, like as far as consciousness goes, spirituality goes, when these people focus on a certain person, there's a measurable effect of like photons that go or energetic something that goes to them and does things so if you have enough people doing that you're actually creating this some energy right what be it negative or positive so these psychopathic people who are into death and destruction and war and yeah I just I just love being evil and look at how evil I am and it's it's power my Power to, my powerfulness is evil. Uh, those people, if you get enough of them together, <laughs> you know, they're creating a real energy uh, that you can see all over the globe. And that if you wanted to personify that energy and call that the devil, or if you want to say that there's this reptilian race of aliens, uh, here screwing around with our politics as long as they can who are somehow feeding energetically off that level like vampires we see like stories of vampires and stories of zombies in our culture sort of like an 
outside growth of this thing that we all know in our mind that there's these certain groups of people that they empire energy and suck like a succubus or a or a wet blanket on your party. There's people that just suck energy out of you, you know? They want to tap the chakras and just... You know? The gigantic sucking sound of that evil woman in your life, if you have one. <laughs> or that evil man in your life. So, I think we've talked a bit about the devil today. Um, the Christians would say, the devil is defeated. So don't worry about the devil. The, your biggest problem is you. And there's a lot of truth to that. In the sense of, a, like I said, a good versus evil battle, it's not a fair fight, you know? If the devil's stuck here because of the Van Allen belts, or stuck here on Earth because of whatever, uh, and the Creator in the book of Revelation destroys the devil and his angels in the lake of fire, I don't, I don't think that's much of a, in, in the long term, that's not much of a fair fight. <laughs> it's not like creator versus creator going up and butting heads. It's the creator of everything and one of his creations, who happens to be a bit more mobile and uh, older than hu humanity. I don't like being bullied, and I don't like bullying people. When I was growing up, I, I thought bullying was sort of stupid. I wasn't really uh, an infantile, an indicative of somebody's cowardice and true fear. And I never, I don't think I've bullied a lot of people. I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I've done a lot of things I wish I didn't do, but I was never the bully in a school. I know that much. And uh, I think it takes a certain personality to, to bully somebody. Usually, you usually find, like, you usually see that these bullies are torn up people on the inside, or that's all they know, and their dad did that to them, or they're cowards, or extremely fearful, so they bully other people to get acceptance of everybody else, and, uh, you know, whether or not the bully has psychological issues or not really isn't my problem, I just don't want the bully to bully people. And, uh, as far as this entity, whatever you want to call him, the devil goes, he's a coward. And when you lose the fear of death, um, you can say that with confidence. You know, the power, one of the main powers of dark energy is the fear of death. The fear of ceasing. And sometimes I think that if it's true that the devil and his angels will be destroyed in the lake of fire in the future by the Creator. If that's true, then obviously he and them are aware of this timeline. There's going to be this time coming up where we're going to get tossed into a lake of fire and not exist anymore. Uh, so there's that panic, that fear, the anticipation of horrible things to come, and they're freaked out. Right? They don't want to die. They want to live forever. And so people who channel the devil, people who are like, oh, my dark energy, I'm so, I'm so hard to understand, I'm so demonic and err. Ah, oh, I just emanate dark energy. <laughs> um, those people will, will pick up those vibes of fear of, of uh, end times or fear of things to come if they're channeling the Lucifer, Lucifer and his, uh, his minions. And, uh, we'll see how it all pans out. So, whether or not you believe in the devil or whatever, doesn't affect other people's belief. You know, there's lots of people who believe in crazy things that doesn't make it real. But, uh, yeah. So we've talked about aliens and extraterrestrials and creator beings and uh, if none of that sounded good to you then I guess we'll just go with we're all mm, a cosmic mistake from nothing out of nowhere uh, created by nothing out of nowhere 
single-celled organisms that multiplied into ridiculously complex organisms through some ridiculous perversion of evolution that uh, Darwin himself didn't believe in. Uh, yeah, sure. If that's what you want to believe. We're all hung by a big cosmic accident. I think that, 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 that takes faith. Bravo to you if you actually believe that. Bravo, because that, that takes faith. That's like a religion unto itself. Yeah. Good for you. I think that's about all I want to say. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I wanted to get in there. I'll do an addition or something if there's anything else that uh, I wanted to say or I'll add to this on the website. Uh, I touched on a lot of topics, a lot of various things and uh, a lot of it could be expanded on. I don't know how long you want to sit here and listen to me ramble on about the devil. Yeah. We can say a lot of things about dark energy and positive energy, I suppose, but um, at the end of the day, you gotta live your life with integrity, without envy, hate, or greed on your soul's journey. Love your friends and love your family. Make sure to tell everybody in your in your life how much you love them. Everybody that's important to you. Nobody's guaranteed you tomorrow. Nobody's guaranteed you that you'll lay in bed tonight and sleep soundly. And uh, we're in a pretty good area. If you're watching this on the internet, I mean, you got a computer connection. You probably got a computer and a laptop. That's pretty good. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people have it a lot worse than you do. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching the Adam Josh Oral Bra.